So from our last video, we applied the state that we had set up for our networking area, and that created our VPC and our subnets and the net gateways and internet gateways and all that good stuff. Next, I want to tackle the compute area. So very much like the network area, the compute area is going to be basically copying and pasting what we had to recreate our EC2 modules, and then we'll tweak that so that it works with our new setup. So let's get this out of the way. And then we can copy our Cloudcast file into our compute file. We'll name it main TF. And we can adjust this as needed. So we'll get rid of this extra stuff, just like in the last video. Again, this is a completely different state. So we have redefined our state items here. Our backend configuration item, the bucket and the key, will be filled in automatically by our run script, just like we saw in the last video. And we still have infrastructure environment and default region variables defined. We have our data source, AWS, for our AWS AMI. We're still going to use that because we're getting our EC2 instances this time. And we can delete our VPC module because that is in a different state file altogether. Now note that these went red because it no longer finds these, which is completely true. This does not know the private and public subnets and security groups for our EC2 servers any longer because the VPC module is not part of this compute state. So we have to do a few things to get this working. First and foremost, again, our modules are up a level, so we'll fix those file paths. And then we have to work on figuring out how to get our public and private subnets and our public and private security groups. So to do that, we need to use more data sources, right? So just like our data source for AWS AMI, we need to find data sources for our VPC and then our VPC subnets and the VPC security groups. So let's go ahead and check out the documentation on the data source for AWS VPC. You can go ahead and grab it by ID, but of course that's kind of useless because the ID is the thing that we want and don't know. So we'll see what else we can do. Here we have filters, and you can also match by tags. In our case, we're going to go ahead and match by tags. We saw how to use filter for here, right? We're using filters for the AWS AMI, and we actually could do that using the filters for tags, but we can also just give it a map of tags also, which is kind of interesting. I'll show you that. So data source. It's going to be a data source for AWS VPC. We're just going to name it VPC. And then we can say match the following tags. Now over here for tags, a map of tags, each pair of which must exactly match a pair on the desired VPC. So let's go over here and see the VPC that we've created and check out the tags. And we have here environment production, the name, cloud class production VPC, all that good stuff. So the ones that are important here are, well, I guess all of them. We're going to go ahead and match all four tags. So let's head back over here. And I'll copy and paste for some notes. And I think we need to tweak this, I think. So Cloudcast Environment VPC, we're in the production environment. So uh, Cloudcast Production VPC matches. Environment Production will match. Managed by Terraform will match. And Project Cloudcast.io will match. So these four tags are all good. So now we can find a VPC. Now that we found that, we can go ahead and find our subnets and security groups. So we need another one, another data source. And this one's going to be AWS subnet IDs, plural. And we'll just call this subnets. Or actually, I'm sorry, we're going to find public subnets first. And we're grabbing subnets, plural, because remember, we're going to say uh, multiple subnets are going to get passed into our EC2 module. And then it's going to select randomly which subnet to add the server into. OK, so just like before, we're going to use tags. We have a map of tags here. And let's check out what our subnets look like. So we'll go to subnets. We'll see the ones created here. We have a bunch, right? Two per availability zone. And there's three availability zones in USCs too. So that's six total. You can go ahead and just see the tags for any of them. And we have uh, ones that are generated by the VPC module. So we don't have full control over these, but they do inherit the ones we do pass the VPC module. So we still get the important ones. One, two, three, four tags, exactly the same as before, except the name is a little bit different. So let's go ahead up here, and I'll just copy this whole tags block. And instead of, actually, these do match, right? The name matches, Cloudcast Production VPC. That'll match here, too. So that's all the same. That's good. Except, so we don't have any tags here to say if this is a public or private subnet. And if we head it back over here, we'll see the tags assigned to the subnets don't differentiate that either. But if we head on over to our VPC documentation for the VPC module that we're using, we'll see that we actually do have a way. So I'm going to search for subnet tags in here. So um, private subnet tags. And we can see we do have a section for private subnet tags and also for public ones. So we can actually pass private and public subnet tags to 
our VPC module to properly tag those so we can differentiate. Let's go back over here. We're going to update our network infrastructure here. Um, actually, it's going to be in the modules directory. So in modules VPC main for our VPC module, we can go ahead and do some stuff here. We have tags for the VPC itself. But let's actually do private subnet tags. And in our case, we're going to say role equals private and then public subnet tags role equals public. Oops. So let's go ahead and see what this does. We'll go to terminal and in here we're going to do run production network plan. And we're going to see what changes this wants to make. And I think I have a slight syntax error here. It's probably with an equal sign. We'll do the plan again. Okay, perfect. So six to change, zero to destroy. And I'm just going to add a role public in addition to the unchanged element. So it's not deleting any, so it's just adding the role. Perfect. Let's go ahead and apply that. Okay, that's nice and quick. Let's head over to our browser here, back over here, refresh this page. Now we should see a role for private subnet traffic and public subnet traffic. Here's one for public. So let's click into the subnet. And just make sure the route table here has an internet gateway. Perfect. And we'll go back to subnets here, find one that's private. This one is private, so we'll click into it and we'll see that this route table has the NAT gateway. So that's perfect. That all lines up with what we want. So back in here, we'll close this and we'll go back to compute. And for our subnets that are public, we want role equals public for our public subnets. And then we can copy and paste this and go ahead and do our private subnets. Role is private in this case. And then we should be able to change these. So we have subnets here. Instead, this is going to be data dot AWS subnet IDs dot public subnets in this case dot IDs plural. And down here we can copy and paste that, except it is private subnets now. Okay, so we have public subnets and private subnets. One thing we actually missed for the subnets is that we need a VPC ID here, which is why we got the VPC ID data source up here in the first place. So that's data.awsvpc. VPC. We named it VPC. We'll get the ID there. And we need this for subnets because subnets belong to a VPC, a, sp a specific VPC. Okay. So now we have the public and private subnets set up. They're going to go to the correct VPC or be pulled from the correct VPC. Next, we need to get our security groups, our public and private ones. And those will be very similar. If we head on over here, well, in the security groups section, we can see that we have ones that we made, right? These are not part of the VPC module, the community one. They're part of the ones that we created. So the tags are under our control. And the tags we use are like this, pretty much the same thing with a name that's a little bit more custom to what we did specifically. Now, if we head on over to the documentation for AWS security groups, it's a data source. And we can see we have filters and I believe tags also. So filters and tags are our two options in the weeds when you don't have to define a VPC ID specifically. So we'll go ahead and use tags again. So data, AWS security group groups, plural. We're just going to name it public SG. We'll start with the public group and I'll copy and paste some tags here. So let's see cloudcast public SG, I think lines up. Perfect. And then we should be able to copy and paste this and get our private SGs, so it'll be private. And then down here, we should be able to replace those. So instead of this array, I think we can go ahead and just say data.awsecurity security groups dot um, public in this case, dot IDs. Copy and paste that down here. And instead of public, of course, this is private. And I think we are just about good to go. So let's go up here. We're going to do run production. And this is going to be our compute uh, state area, and we're going to init that. All right, that's initialized. Let's go ahead and do a plan to see what it wants to do. Okay, so we ran the apply. We have six to add. So that's going to be our servers and whatever else it's going to create. I forget already. Our EIPs, our EIP associations, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and apply that and make sure it works. Okay, so those got created fairly quickly. Let's go ahead and just verify in our account. So I'll head to EC2. Running instances is three. That's good. So web, once again, it's not part of this course. And we have our production web and production worker. So check out the tags. It's all for production. 
Security is in our security group, our public SG for the web, and it should be private SG for worker. Perfect. And that means it'll be in our subnet as well. Let's check out networking. It's in our um, production VPC. Perfect. And the subnet is the Cloudcast, uh, well, is the one for private network because we just clicked on the worker server, route table, NAT gateway, right? So that all lines up. All right. So we have our servers up and running. We've successfully created instances in our compute section of our state here. Now, the key here is that to share data between different states is we use data sources instead of our module syntax. And that allows us to still have separate state areas that are totally separate from each other and can be updated separate from each other while still allowing our state areas to have knowledge of the other ones, right? So our compute here has knowledge, is able to get information about the correct VPC and the correct subnuts and the correct security groups and all that good stuff via Terraform's data resources.